What's up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I am pumped to bring our first Mercedes-Benz to the channel. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Mercedes-Benz AMG 4-door GT 63S 4Matic Plus. a big shout out to Mercedes-Benz London, part of the Finch Auto Group for letting us borrow this beast. If you live anywhere from Toronto to Detroit and you're looking for a Benz, make sure to hit them up. My favorite car of all time was the Audi RS7 Performance. And to me, I felt like there was no other or better four-door sedan out there until I drove this. This is a torpedo, flies straight, goes where you point it. I love dynamic steering that you can just fling it and you can turn it and it just turns so easily. This is just so nice. It's so well balanced that I can just throw this thing into a corner, even in drift mode, hit the gas, bumps, and then turn sideways on the throttle. So nice. Brakes are awesome, clean. What a vehicle. Now here's the exhaust for another 30 seconds, just for you, just for you, YouTube algorithm. I think when Mercedes built this car, they said, let's take all the tech available in the world Let's take all the power available in the world and make it a reality. <laughs> and this thing is beautiful. It sounds awesome, but look at this design. What do you guys think? Let me know. It's so hard to see this car on a camera or on a TV because in person, it's so much better looking. There's so much data in this car and there's so many options that I have no idea where to start. So I'm gonna start with this. This thing is like a jet without wings. Look at this thing. It's wide body in every way. It reminds me of some supercars that actually put Liberty Walk, like the Lambos that make it wide body. Because this to me is obviously like a CLS because people compare it to CLS. They even compare the engine because it's the same engine as the E63S. So people ask, why should I buy this car over an E63S or a CLS 63? Well, let me answer you that. You cannot buy the CLS 63 because this car has taken its place plus some. So what does this car compare against? This car compares against a Porsche Panamera Turbo, but it also compares with itself. You see, Mercedes also makes the E63S and makes a CLS 63. So internally there's competition, except the difference being this car is cut from its own cloth and that cloth is AMG. Yes, the E63 does have the same engine. It does do the zero to 60 time in pretty much the same. Some say it's faster. However, what it doesn't include, it doesn't look like Batman's car. All right, so let's check what's under the hood of this thing. Now, all right, there's something there. Okay, you never know whether you have to put your hand underneath or put your hand on the top. So, oh, okay, that's it. Uh-huh, check this out. Somebody thought this would pop the hood. And I know that because look at this side, it is flat. But this is the real meat and potatoes. This is a V8 bi-turbo four liter. Now you might think, yes, other products have it. But the difference being is that this guy built this motor. He built it with his hands. 630 horsepower, 664 foot-pounds of torque that catapults this beast to 100 in 3.2 seconds. <laughs> Where are my wings, baby? Oh man, you can have so much fun with this thing. It is not even funny. 
so much power. I like how everything is just crammed in there. There's not a lot of space and they've used every single inch here. They've used AMG coolant lines. They've put this carbon fiber piece that says AMG. I would have liked to see AMG maybe across here or a little bit more AMG pieces, but it is tightly wound in there. But I do have to bring Ellie out for one reason. And that is because of nomenclature. You see, this is called a 63. And 63 in my mind should be 6.3 liters. I don't know why you have a four liter twin turbo, but don't worry, you're not as bad as Audi and most German cars now that are changing it to 45, 50, 55, based on how much horsepower they do because they're trying to be like electric. So Mercedes-Benz calls this design a hot V. And when they say hot V, they're talking about this hole here that has two turbos. You see, you can see it right in the engine compartment. This is where the two turbos sit and it's designed to actually minimize turbo lag. People always talk about horsepower and torque, but what they don't talk about is how often you have to get out of your car and put gas in it because these things aren't exactly economical. It does have cylinder deactivation, but this also has an 80 liter fuel tank. You see, compared against an Audi RS7 or a BMW M5, they've got a 68 liter tank and a 75 liter tank respectively. You see, I always thought this compares against an M5 or an RS7, which were my favorite four-door sedans out there, except those vehicles are basically performance four-door sedans off a four-door sedan. This is built off a sports car or a sports coupe that they made into a four-door. So it's a different perspective of when they built this. Now Mercedes calls this the GT four-door coupe or coupe, whichever you'd like to call it. In my opinion, there's all kinds of varying degrees of what a coupe looks like. This is a four-door version, and most people out there will tell you a coupe is a two-door version. Now, in a couple years, what we will see is we will see a two-door sedan. When that comes, this channel will have a million subs. There are so many distinctions of what a four-door coupe is supposed to be like. They call it a sportback. They call it a liftback. They call it who knows what they call it. But in my opinion, they should actually just use fastback and say that is a fastback SUV or that is a fastback sedan. This is a four-door coupe, or would like to call it a four-door fastback. Look at this front end. This mouth is huge. Yes, it does look like a shark, but think about this. This thing has two emblems on the front of it. It's got a massive star and it's got another one up here. It's got two emblems on the front of the car. Huge. Along with this monster front grille, this does have active shutter vents that open and close when the engine needs more air. And by the way, this is heated, so you'll always see that. This is a bumper insert, and it looks like its own bumper. If you guys have watched our channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of Michelins, and these have one of the best Michelin tires out there. No, I'm not sponsored by Michelin. However, I find them the stickiest tire out there, and this has it. This also has a staggered setup. It's got 275s in the front and 315s in the back. Considering this car is all wheel drive, it does have a rear bias to the back that it's got 50-50 split normally, but it can send up to 100% of power to the back. And you can set in the system to have it always rear wheel drive. Sick. Oh, hi Ellie, what's going on? Oh, the center lock. You see center locks are designed for race cars that you can just twist it, pull it off and the rim comes off. Except this is not a center lock. This is a center hubcap. The center lock is just there to cover the bolts. So don't judge the nuts by its cover. Now this is where it gets interesting. And this is something I really noticed when I drove the car is it has a really tight steering radius and that has to do with the rear wheel steering. You see these wheels actually turn the opposite direction when you drive slow and you're turning, but they actually travel the same direction as your steering input when you're driving faster. So they work both ways, left and right. Now this specific car has been debadged a little bit. There is no bi-turbo on the inlet on the inside. This does have carbon fiber mirror caps and it does have a carbon fiber wing. So I really like the way this one is specifically specced out. It does have carbon fiber all along the rear valence, but on the side of this car, I really like how it's hipped. There's a lot of hip going on. And another piece, I like that there's no shark fin. They do have a very sleek antenna or GPS antenna that's hiding in the center on the back. Now this part of the car looks exactly like the coupe. This is the sexiest part of the car in my opinion. And yes, there is a blank button on the inside of the car and that is because this spoiler is fixed. It's a fixed wing, you cannot adjust it. That is why there's a blank button inside the car and people will lose their mind, including me, but I know because it's fixed. All right, so the meat and potatoes, lots of carbon fiber, love the rear diffuser, 
But there's two interesting pieces, these two. These, in my opinion, are added on after the fact because they have a different paint color. And I think it's because if you get hit from the back, you just gotta replace these two pieces and that's it. And if you haven't forgotten, this is an AMG. And I know this because everybody in the world copies these exhausts. You see it says AMG, 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 AMG. And if you don't see those, you see that AMG. Believe it or not, you can actually get vehicles out there that don't have a button to pop the trunk. But they were thinking. What? This is a fastback? Yes, it is a fastback. 461 liters worth of fastbackness compared to the Panamera that has 467 liters worth. Let's try to get Ellie in there. Up and over. All right, so I'm on the inside of the GT 63S AMG. And first impressions, it's magical. I love the matte finished carbon fiber all the way throughout. This does have the upgraded Burstmeister sound system, so there's speakers everywhere, and I'll get into exactly where they are. But let's talk about the display in front of it. The display is a 12.3 inch screen times two. There's 12.3 here and 12.3 here. And there's lots of different colors. They don't stick to one color. There's white, there's gray, there's red, there's blue, there's green. There's tons of colors. There's so many colors that there are 64 different types of ambient light you can get in this car. 64. Now they do incorporate some of that when you pick different selections when it comes to performance. So you can go comfort, you can go individual. As I mentioned in the drive, you guys will see that. But this color scheme is out of this world. If they could put 120 colors, they would, but 64 is obviously enough. Now it does have four banks, visual banks here, and you will see that now it looks like there's three blank buttons and two physical buttons but there's actually one blank button and that is because this has a fixed spoiler. It doesn't have an adjustable spoiler that you can adjust four different ways. It's fixed, so this button here is blank, but it does have eight banks to resemble the eight cylinders that are in this vehicle. Something cool when you get in and you wanna start the car, this engine start button sort of breathes. It goes in and fades in and fades out, so you know to press it when you hit it. Let's talk about these seats. These seats are great. They are full massage. They're shiatsu. They massage you on the bottom. They massage you on the top. But not only that, the type of material they've used in these seats is Alcantara, Napa leather, and they've actually incorporated ventilation in the leather. You see, most cars when they have Napa leather, Napa's too soft to actually have perforations in it. But this one, you don't really notice it, but it's soft leather that has perforations in a sports seat with massage. Primo. And also they have the AMG steel front and back. On all four seats, they have race buckets. As far as connectivity goes, there are two USBs in the center console here and in the front lower console where the cup holders are because they're completely hidden. And they give you this little small cup holder here. This is a difficult cup holder, but it integrates in the dash, so I kind of understand it. Not the easiest to put drinks in because they're sort of hidden. Bottles are cool. Coffee is gonna spill everywhere, I guarantee you because this thing is a rocket. So wireless charging goes here. The problem is every time your phone buzzes, it's tucked away here. You actually have to pull it out and look or maybe just focus on driving. Or you can use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because it does fill up the whole screen. You see, the Apple CarPlay takes up the whole screen and it's huge, so people in the back can see it as well. They have a touchpad in the back. Me, in the front, I don't have a touchpad. I have a rotary knob and I'm happy about that because in the 2019 model, you get a rotary knob and in the 2020 model, you get a touchpad. Me, I prefer rotary knobs. Pretty easy, you just turn it over, push down. You can do that, or you can use a steering wheel which actually connects this whole screen. You see on the steering wheel, we have two little pads, one on the right and one on the left, and that perfectly controls the right. So if I wanna change this screen, I use my right hand, I pivot up, I pivot down, left and right, just like this, like you would on your phone, and it focuses on the right screen. On the left side, I go up and down, and it changes, in this specific case, the cluster. Pretty easy to use. There's lots to know, but it's pretty easy to use. I love this carbon fiber. This matte carbon fiber, as I mentioned, is beautiful. They have a nice long piece, and they do have it inlaid on the inside around piano black. Not the biggest fan of piano black because people with rings or watches will scratch this. And I'm not the biggest fan of how they have the little emblems in here and how you can adjust them. Now, they do change pretty easily, and it will change the color, but I just don't like this little picture. I just find it kind of cheap, if I may say. An interesting design piece is the sound system. You see, they put speakers everywhere, including this up here. So the center light is now a speaker, 
And they probably did that because they need a lot of space, and the only way to get space is to steal stuff that needs space, like lighting. So on the door panel here, you can select if you want heated seats in three increments, cooled seats, and a really cool piece that I saw really long time ago, which they haven't put in cars lately, is adjusting the passenger seat. You see, when somebody gets in the car that's a new person and they move your seat, the next person that's been in the car before, like your wife or husband, will know that seat's been moved. You simply press this button and that seat will move back to its original position, thinking. In terms of driver comfort, this thing has got everything on the planet, including heated armrest. I put my arm here and it is heated. Magical. And the softest buttons you can buy on the market are on this car. I'm not sure if it's across the board in Benz because this is the first Benz we've done, but these buttons, window buttons are so soft. You just touch them lightly and they go down. They're so soft. Nicest quality buttons in this car. Sorry, Audi, but this car has nicer buttons. And that is because Benz generally has a million buttons and they found a way to clean it all up and put it pretty much all in the steering wheel. And obviously thanks to Apple CarPlay. These jet engine vents are sweet. They're so intuitive that you just turn them to open, turn them to close. And you can obviously pivot them left and right, but open, close. So you can just easily close them all. That's it. When I first saw them, I thought they would not put out enough airflow, but surprisingly they do. And that's because this cockpit is all wrapped around. It's not a wide cockpit, it's just wrapped around well. Even though it sort of gives you that image of this huge flat panel screen, it does wrap into you which is pretty sweet for such a car so big. We have heated and cooled cup holders in the back and in the front, we barely have cup holders. They're not heated, they're not cooled, they're there, but they're not really there. On the left side here, we've got a lot of nice clean buttons. That is where you can adjust your assisted steering, your keeping your lane departure, your parking sensor on or off, and heads up display as well as raising the front end. If you do wanna raise the vehicle up because you're going over hard bumps or high bumps, you just hit the button, the car raises. But if I have to be nitpicky, it's the door gaps. When I close the door, I do have a pretty big door gap on the inside here that I can see the paint on both sides. That's the only thing if I'm really being picky. Otherwise, the materials are beautiful. All right, so let's jump inside the infotainment and the display of the vehicle. So off the top, I just hit the home button on the steering wheel and it will take me right here. It's a navigation, radio, media, phone, connect vehicle system. So if we go to navigation, the car's navigation, most likely people are not gonna use this, they're gonna use CarPlay, but it's nice and big and wide. Very clean, easy to see. Now the Audis do have them in the center and a lot of other cars also have them in the center. I do like it here because it's right in the core and you can see it. Now, if you do wanna know where you're going, you can see it in the heads up display. And speaking of heads up display, I love the fact there's not a plastic piece now there's a plastic cup holder, but there's not a plastic piece on the front here. This heads up display is hidden so clearly. In a lot of other cars, you'll see this plastic piece that wraps around right here. That is so annoying to see on a price this expensive. On a car this expensive, it should not have any plastic. And this one doesn't. Thank God. It takes me a while to figure out how to use the system. So I always just go back to home. So I hit the home button and it takes me back to the main menu. So I pivot to where I want. So in this specific case, let's talk about the vehicle because there's some crazy features in here I want you guys to see. One being the seats. The seats, you've got driver's seat and passenger seat. You can pick what you want. So massage, a dynamic seat, which basically means it opens and closes when you go around corners and you can have two different levels, off level one and level two. Now it also does have lumbar, so you can adjust your lumbar, your intensity, those types of things, pretty straightforward stuff, but you cannot adjust it here. You have to adjust it here, which is a little bit annoying considering I don't have a touch screen that I have to use this rotary, which I do like, but this should just be a really a quick menu so I guess you'd have to set it and then set it in your one, two, or three. That's what I'm thinking they want you to do. So you can also adjust your side bolsters and your seat heating balance, which is all pretty straightforward on a car this expensive. But this is where it gets interesting. They've got something called energizing comfort. Energizing in caps. We can put refresh where a green blue lighting and cool refreshing breeze whisks you away to the seaside. Or warmth, cozy warmth by means of a heated seats and surfaces with orange yellow lighting and vitality, a revitalizing effect provided by stimulating light and invigorating music. Enjoyment, the seat massage function and sunlight lift your mood and allow you to relax. Enhance your feeling of well-being by using warming relaxation and soft colors. And if you think I'm lying, there's even a training video. Are you ready? I'm ready. Training, muscle stimulation, muscle relaxation and balance. Muscle stimulation, here we go. 
By switching between tension and relaxation, you strengthen your muscles and boost the circulation in your legs. Hmm. Would you like to take the exercise up a level? The motion is barely level visible. Level up. Yes. Tense your buttock muscles and roll your coccyx forward slightly. <laughs> and release. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Just having this is crazy. Anyways, back to reality. Energizing comfort gives you some real energizing comfort. But here's where the meat and potatoes are, and that is track pace. They do have something called dynamic select, but you can pick all that stuff up, so I won't get into that. I'll get into track pace. And track pace is this. Warning, use this on race tracks only. AMG. Track race, drag race, telemetry, options and back. So let's hit up drag race. Acceleration, quarter mile, braking and history. You have all this data, guys. There's so much, as I was mentioning, they took all of the things that are available in the car business and they put it in this car. So you can choose to pick what you want. Now, I don't know if the owners that are gonna buy this car are gonna use all this data, but it is cool that you can show this off to all your buddies. So to show you how easy this is, basically take my left thumb, I scroll up and down, and this is all the data. The clarity is stunning. It's so, the detail is awesome. I pivot to the right, I've got that, I circle up, that's my nav. That's my data, tire pressures, my race mode from AMG, my boost. It's just so nice I can pivot this one as opposed to the whole menu. It's so clean, I love this. And on the right side, I simply pivot this and I go up and down. That way there's no need to have the center console there. You could just simply use this. The center console really is just for the passenger in my opinion. I can use all this set up my side bolsters all by my finger. So I'm in the back of the GT now and there's quite a bit of room and yes it is a four seater so I do have the width and this bucket seat does hold me in and I do have the headroom only because they did get the ceiling. They've cut out this headliner to make more room, more headroom for the person in the back. Now some other products have a removable LCD in the back to control but this one is fixed and this is touchscreen. Ironically enough when I pick this car up the front display is not touchscreen, but it does have fingerprint marks all over it, which makes you think that people are kind of used to having a touchscreen in the front. But it's nice that it has it back here. I can see performance, I can see the vehicle. It is pretty much like a cluster right in the back here, which makes you feel that this is a very performance oriented car. As I mentioned, it does have heated and cooled cup holders as well as heated seats in the back. Three increments on both sides, left or right. And in the back here, you push this button and you have a deep, center console. This has two USBs, a cigarette plug, and an actual physical plug that you can plug right in here. Pretty nice to see. And of course, AMG's logo crested right on the back here, and on the front seats, and on the center console in the front. I like those pieces. And most liftbacks do have a rear sunshade, and they're always manual. It's kind of hard to get a liftback with an automatic. They're usually manual. You just put your hand down here and close it off. Pretty straightforward. Everyone's got it, nothing special. But there is something special. The Isofix anchors for the kids in the back. You wouldn't even know they're there, but they hide two small zippers right here that you can pull and expose the Isofix anchors. Check it out. So I go into race mode and there's two ways to get there. One, I can use a steering wheel to toggle over to race, or I can use the banks here and I can go right to race. I hold the stability program down and let go. I hold both shifters down, drift mode activated, and voila, I am in full rear wheel drive mode, and let's have a good time. So the GT has six different driving modes. Slippery, individual, which you can set up in the display here, comfort, sport, sport plus, and race. But not only that, it actually changes the color in the car. So. All your buttons have a color scheme. So in this specific case, slippery looks to be sort of a very light blue. Individual is purple. Comfort is a dark blue. Sport is yellow. Sport plus is red and race is red. So everything in the car changes color when you go in these different modes. And you can only get this with this AMG steering wheel. You see the AMG steering wheel has, has these two extra mode buttons right on the bottom that you can toggle. Similar to other cars, similar to other race cars essentially that have different toggles. But on the left side, you can choose 
the individual portion of it. So if you are in a specific mode and you want to toggle between exhaust or if you want to toggle between shutting your start and stop or your, your ESP or your suspension, you can all do that right here on the left side of the steering wheel. I love the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. They're nice and high, very engaging. I love the steering wheel as I mentioned. This shift knob is nice and small, so I do really like big cars, small steering wheel, small shifter and narrow sort of cockpit. That makes me feel that I'm a lot more driver oriented as opposed to a big car with lots of power and everything's just big and wide. This back end just so nice. These are 315s in the back. The fact you can get 315s to, to edge out a little bit is so nice and it can transfer all the power to the back as I mentioned 100% and I can pick to have a full rear wheel drive car on my command. So one of the downsides with having such sticky tires is road noise. You see, on roads that are not perfectly graded, they do make a lot of noise. So it's not as quiet as one would think in here, and you do get sort of the droning tire sound, but that is irrelevant of the car. That is purely on having sticky tires. So anybody that has performance cars out there know that you will get the sort of drone, unless you drive on a really clean asphalt surface, but otherwise you will get this and it might drive you nuts. So the only way to avoid that is to hit a couple gears down, and hammer it. There's so much data here in this car, I don't even know who's gonna use this thing. Because if you got this much money, uh, I don't even know. There's just so much data here, it's unreal. You need to spend like a week just on the tech in this car, it's crazy. Anyways, for me, it's about putting it in a race, putting it in drive, and stomping on the gas. Woohoo! limited slip, baby. And you've got these dynamic seats that push you in, push your left, push your right. Woohoo! But now I'm in comfort, it's quiet. And yes, the tires are noisy because they are full out extreme performance tires. But the suspension is soft and this feels like a normal big vehicle. Steering, still very direct. Just not instant direct, but it's direct once you point in that direction and the seats still give you that push because you can customize them in the vehicle. And now I'm in four cylinder deactivation. So now I'm in running in four cylinders because I'm in eco mode. It doesn't have an eco mode, but it has a blue little box that tells me that I'm in four cylinders. Sweet, saving gas and saving the planet. Now a pretty common thing in performance cars with their braking is squeal or noise. So when it's cold out or you're not on the brakes enough or your whole life is basically just bumper to bumper traffic, the brakes will squeak. There's nothing dealerships can do. That is just the name of the game. So if you ever hear a Ferrari roll up or GT roll up and the brakes squeak, just remember the guy didn't drive it hard enough. And the seat hugs you and on the throttle and the back end comes out. <laughs> If you look at this chart the car is giving me, it tells me how much I'm on the throttle. Oh man, this is too much fun. More corners. Good times, baby. <laughs> so there are probably cars faster from zero to 100. This does it in just over three seconds, but it's the rolling power that's astronomically fast. This basically needs wings. It's just missing wings because the back end slides out and it's just got so much torque, even if I'm not in the right gear. Even if I'm not in the right gear. Nine speed transmission. I'm not a big fan of nine speeds or 10 speeds. I usually like seven at the most because I always find like there's just trying to search the gear, always in the wrong gear sort of thing. But this is fast. Because this is a multi-clutch, it's instant. It's just so much power. To give you some perspective, this car pulls over a G on the skid pad. Just so much fun. It's a big car, yes. It doesn't feel like a big car, yes. The steering is awesome, yes. Direct feel, yes. Is it uncomfortable? No. Can you get your kids in the back? Yes, because now you can get it in a five-seater. Whew, breathe, breathe, breathe. There's so much data here. This is like I have a full-fledged race computer in front of me telling me all the data my linear acceleration my lateral acceleration my gas pedal percentage my average speed in a tenth of a decimal place a full bar graph my g meter that shows me what i was doing and i really like the fact that when it builds up boost and you let go of the throttle you can actually hear the wastegate release the pressure so it does release the inner child in you that loves that adrenaline that exhilaration that awesomeness in a car that's this big 
Well, my neck hurts from all this whiplash that I'm giving myself, but don't worry. I've got massage seats. And I've got massage seats that actually massage your bottom. You see, most massage seats just massage your back, but this massage seat massages your back and your bottom. And it's not some cheap lumbar support. It's basically full shiatsu massage that give you the massage. And there's actually a workout in this car where you can depress back to work yourself out when you're sitting in traffic. What have they not thought about? The other thing I noticed is this car has fragrance. It has a fragrance that gets put through the HVAC and it only comes in two smells. The AMG smell, which is basically made from the tiers of Porsche owners and the second smell, which is made from crisp $100 bills. So two versions, AMG and crisp $100 bills are the only smells that are available in this car. As crazy and as beastly as this car is, next year, AMG is coming out with the GT73, which is crazy to think. That's gonna be AMG's first hybrid monster. It's gonna make almost 805 horsepower. We don't have the exact numbers yet, but they're gonna be around 800 or so. <sighs> just gotta breathe when you think about these crazy numbers. And like just a thing like air suspension. Air suspension used to be on old cars that would just raise and lower and to be more coasting. Now they put it on high performance beasts that you can be comfortable, you can drive fast, you can go drifting, you can take your whole family in it and nobody's gonna know how fast you're driving because you can put in comfort and stay silent. Except for the tire noise. Sick. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys liked this on this GT 63 S AMG. This car was a blast to do. This was our longest review so far. We spent a lot of hard work putting this together for you guys. So if you did like it, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please comment. Hope you guys liked it, and thank you very much.